So this is the quick review of all of the different products that are currently available for rubber care on automobiles. So I'll go through the ones that we're going to test in the uh, evaluation data. So to start with, we've got uh, Meguiar's Mirror Glaze Professional Vinyl and Rubber Cleaner and Conditioner. Uh, another popular one for automobiles is the Sonax Rubber Protectant Gummy Fledge. Another popular rubber sealant protectant is the 303. So we'll take a look at that. Uh, we've got the 3-in-1 RV Care Rubber Sealed Conditioner. So take a look at that. Next is that Gummy Fledge the Stick version. So another one that's uh, commonly popular on the market. Zymol Seal. Uh, rather expensive seal conditioner, but another one that's been recommended. Uh, some people are going to like this one. Uh, Pam uh, Spray uh, Pan Conditioner. So we'll take a look at that, how that comes out in the comparison. A lot of people recommend the Shinetsu uh, silicone seal protector. So we'll take a look at that one as well. VRP, rubber, vinyl, and plastic protectant from the Chemical Guys. Another one that came up in a bunch of blogs as recommendations. And finally, this one, which is uh, Soul Safe Weather Care uh, Seal Protectant. So we'll take a look at all of these and uh, do the comparison. So what exactly do we want to have in a good rubber lubricant uh, protectant? So it has to be easy to use. Ideally, we'd want it to not be an environmentally a problem. Uh, you don't want it to break down the um, EPDM material. You want it to smell decent as a product. Um, you don't want it to collect dust, so you don't want it to be sticky, have any residue. Um, probably want it to protect against the uh, sun, so it doesn't break down the rubber material. Um, you probably want it to be lubrication, so lubricating, so it doesn't uh, uh, create abrasion between shoes or other contact. You don't want it to swell the, the uh, or you probably want it to to soften the seals over time. Um, and you want it to be stable over time as well. So for testing for UV, I came up with a uh, testing regimen that uses a plastic thin membrane and uh, we'll coat that membrane with the different materials, different uh, products. And then we'll look at how well the sun penetrates or transmits through that membrane with the coating on it. Uh, we have two different gauges for looking at uh, UVA and also for looking at UVB through this membrane. And we'll compare against uh, controls with uh, no coatings on the membrane and see how much it actually blocks from the different products. So the graph of this shows really interesting results. It shows the uh, Armorall does just a little bit of protection. Everything else is really poor protection, with the exception of the 3-in-1 RV Care and the Soul Safe, which are both uh, extremely good UV blockers. So, for a UV standpoint, uh, it looks to me like that's the best bet. The second test here is a durometer test. Durometer measures the uh, softness or pliability of the rubber material uh, and gives you a uh, quantitative result. So I've got a gauge that I purchased to look at the durometer of the different materials. Uh, basically it's got a uh, small needle 
uh, that you push up against the uh, rubber and then how much it deflects uh, is a measurement of the uh, stiffness of the rubber. So the results of that are also very interesting. It looks like the uh, two materials were the best. The Nexet uh, gummy fledge was one of the better ones out of the group and then the Solsafe rubber cure also is one of the better ones. So it looks like these two have included uh, rubber softeners. The next test was an abrasion test where we put together a, a Dremel tool with a spring-loaded uh, force on the rubber sample against a rotating smooth metal shaft. And the goal here was to see which coating uh, protected the rubber th the most from high uh, abrasion forces. So the results here, um, I'm showing all of the different uh, samples as were tested by the numerical index. So it's sort of a, a blind test to some extent. Uh, 10 seconds and then also up to one minute. The 10 seconds really wasn't enough to get a good enough signal of uh, and differentiate between the different products. So you can see here, uh, Zymol at uh, 60 seconds had quite severe abrasion, whereas the uh, Solsafe at 60 seconds abrasion actually didn't have hardly any abrasion. So here's the uh, summary results, and you can see that uh, McGuire's, uh, McGuire's did really well. Uh, 303 rubber treatment actually did really, really well, and then the Solsafe did really well from the abrasion standpoint. Uh, Zymol not so good, and Armorol not so good as well. The next test was a seal-to-seal uh, -seal friction test. So if I take two rubber seal surfaces and uh, slide them past each other, how much is the uh, dynamic friction between the two? So I made a quick apparatus with a uh, force gauge to slide the two uh, uh, rubber seals against each other. And uh, this is kind of roughly what it would look like with the uh, force gauge and then slowly pushing it forward. And then you get a uh, force graph that looks something like that uh, it just showed. So there's not a huge difference between the groups except for, of course, the control. Um, but there was a couple of standouts. One was the Shinetsu was better, the uh, Nexit was good, and the Soul Safe was also pretty good overall. So finally we did an aging test as well with uh, putting samples on a sample board and put leave, leaving it exposed to the environment. So each of the samples, they were labeled and then the protectants were put on uh, each of the samples one at a time. And then uh, this board was then set out into the elements exposed to uh, sun and rain and wind and whatever else the weather conditions happen to be and uh, we'll see what happened. Unfortunately the uh, weather conditions were sufficiently poor that the uh, masking tape only lasted probably you know a few weeks before it very quickly started to come loose and come off but uh, it still was pretty clear as to which samples were which because of the uh, orientation and the way the samples were put onto the uh, plastic board. So here's the aging samples after about nine months of environmental exposure. You can see the uh, name tags fell off, but we know which ones are which by the spacing. So this is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, and twelve, which was the control. And I just set a brand new sample here, so a visual comparison of the of the samples. So if I look at it closely, it looks like from a dust collection, uh, four is pretty bad with the dust stuck around it. And uh, six, seven, eight, nine is pretty bad as well. Um, there's a little bit around five, and a little bit around 10, a little bit around, looks like uh, one and two, uh, not as bad as uh, four here. So. So for, for dust collection, it looks like this is probably the worst. And this is probably second worst here, number five. Uh, this was 11 and 12, by the way, on the list of controls. Uh, from a surface uh, degradation standpoint, 
it's not quite so obvious with the amount of aging that went on. Uh, the control you can see is a little bit gray colored. I don't see any major, you know, some maybe slight uh, discoloration. Uh, it looks like number 11 did pretty well. Uh, number four actually looks pretty good. Number one uh, is pretty gray looking. Number six is pretty gray looking. This suggests the surface is starting to uh, get some some chemical changes going on it looks like um, nothing terribly outstanding um, actually nine looks kind of okay still has a little bit of a shiny surface to it um, same with the looks like number four it's not too bad as well if you look at the comparison, you definitely see there's some aging going on between the control and the aged sample. A little bit of a discoloration. But nothing horrible on any of the samples with this uh, you know, visually obvious damage going on that uh, stands out upon a first look other than maybe some slight discoloration. We'll have to take a closer look to actually quantify that. So to get a little more of a feel for what happened with the aging of the samples, I remeasured the durometer for the, each of the sample sets. And it looks like, of course, software would be better as far as making the seals more pliable. Uh, SoulSafe came out pretty good and Chemical Guys came out pretty good. Uh, surprisingly, the next set did not, which was a little bit of a uh, shock. So to summarize this up, I put together a color-coded table. Um, you might have to stop the video to look at this because it's a lot of detail. But just in general, I color-coded it so green would be kind of a positive and the uh, salmon color is uh, a negative. One thing that stands out is almost all of these are not uh, non, are non, are toxic, not non-toxic, with the possible exception of the soul safe, which uh, says it's non-toxic. The other thing I wanted to mention was uh, not all of these materials are chemically compatible with EPDM seals, such as the 3-in-1 uh, RV Care is a definite silicone-based material, and uh, that is not supposedly compatible with uh, EPDM. I guess I was really shocked that only two of the samples, the uh, SoulSafe and the 3-in-1 Three in one RV care were actually uh, highly UV blocking, with Armorall just slightly more than nothing, um, but the rest did did not, which was a bit of a concern. And the uh, three in one RV care is uh, not really compatible, being a silicone based material with uh, EPDM. So if I had to uh, do a quick summary of which ones looked the best, I would have to say that I think that. The uh, Soul Safe was looking pretty good, although it did have some white residue after the aging test that uh, was on the surface. It would have to be kind of rubbed in. The uh, 3 in 1 wasn't bad, but again, it's not compatible. The uh, Nexit had pretty good um, metrics. Not the best, but not the worst. Uh, but again, it didn't have any UV protection. And it's probably uh, one of the less toxic of the of the bunch um, short of that it's uh, kind of a draw anyway if you enjoyed this video uh, please like and subscribe i hope you found it inter interesting and uh, i hope you watch the next one that comes out